Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Yeah, welcome to Drinking Bros Spring Break episode, Dan. You happy about it? Super happy, yeah. <laughs> Did you rake up on the wrong side of the bed? No, there's no wrong side of the bed. My whole fucking bed's the wrong side, all right? I wake <laughs> up like that every single day. If, you don't, if you're not waking up angry, I don't think you're paying attention to what's going on. For example, sure. all these assholes back here yep. behind us, can we get a shot of these assholes? There it is. Hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of people on the beach. There's, a, good, there's a thousand people out they're here. They're in a say. nationwide quarantine, and <laughs> they're like the child. They're like that asshole group of kids in your middle school class where the teacher walks in at a bad mood. She's like, hey, everybody keep it down. And these assholes keep talking, and all of a sudden, everybody's on lockdown for the rest of the day. Well, I, Go I, home. I think it's important. No, not at all. There's a Fucking lot of turds. ass out here. There is a lot of ass out here. Turn around real quick, Alec. Get a shot of those people taking a, a photo in the back. Look at the group photos. Look at the spring break photos that are happening right now. Look at those people partying. Get a shot of this girl, Alec, again. She's, she's asking for another one. She's asking for another one for the gram, maybe a TikTok. How old do you think she is? Ballpark it, Alec. Very young. Very young. That's, not, not too young, that's right? That's creepy. Don't say very young like that. Yeah, don't say very. Who says very young, you creeper? She's riding my wheelhouse, brother. Hell yeah. yeah. That was a very yeah. Michael Jackson thing for you to say, dude. Well, she's a girl, though. <laughs> Michael Jackson wouldn't be into a girl. No, no, Come definitely on. wouldn't be into a girl. Uh, Dan, you've got uh, jeans on and a long sleeve here. 80 degrees on the beach in the apocalypse. Is that for the coronavirus? We're or? sitting in the shade. We are. I knew we were going to be sitting in the shade. So you just you were like, man, I'm good on jeans. Yep. Yeah. M- me, my skin is ashy. It's white. Um, I've not seen the sun in days. I take vitamin D supplements, so I'm good. Oh, uh, do you really? Yeah. Does that shit work? Yeah. Okay. I've always wondered, man, because, you know... I was into fish oil for a while, and then there was a report that fish oil was bullshit. I've been taking, well, most of the fish oil was fake. That was the problem. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah, but if you buy it from a reputable source, then it's fine. Okay. I mean, it's, it's omega-3 fats. Yeah. That's what you're getting from it. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. There's not a lot of fats on this beach. I can tell you what, man. There's three colleges in this town, and these kids don't give a fuck. We're fucking spraying breaking out here, There dude. is some fat fuck back this way. Uh, I saw him pushing uh uh a cooler down the hill did you know and i'm like how how hard is this guy breathing right now well, like if you're that if you're that obese you probably have respiratory problems you may <laughs> want to stay home motherfucker is it is it respiratory problems because of weight or because of the virus both <laughs> right Aren't we part of the, the problem, though, Dan, today? Like, we're oh, the yeah. two assholes who are out here recording. I am almost always quarantine. part of the problem. <laughs> Anytime there's a problem and you're wondering what my involvement is, it's I'm probably on the wrong side of the issue. <laughs> so whatever. What are you going to so, do? So here's the real sitch. We're recording. This is our Sunday night episode that drops at 8 o'clock. We're recording this at uh, 2 o'clock on a Friday afternoon because there is a rumor in the state that they are actually going to shut down this beautiful beach you see behind me here at uh, 4 o'clock. So we thought, eh, why not pop on out and see if we can gra- grab a spring break episode for the people at home. Just in case you're not near a beach and you don't have the opportunity to come out to a beach and enjoy spring break, we're going to try to enjoy it for you. And right now, there's a girl behind you. and that Alec, you can't turn around right now, but Dan is fixated on no. that ass. No, I was looking at this dog over here, actually, but that girl is trying really hard to get... A little she, screen she, time? She's really trying to angle her body as much as she can to get a perfect Instagram picture. Ooh. I just want... I wish uh, somebody should shoot a documentary. I know there's um, that Instagram account, Influencers in the Wild. Have you ever yeah, seen yeah, that? Yeah, it's yeah, really yeah. funny. Yeah. But uh, just come out to the... If you really want to see how fake all these pictures on Instagram really are, <laughs> come out to the beach and check it out. Like, you'll see some girl that's packing on about 180, and she's twisting her body <laughs> as such to lose about 50 pounds. You know no, what I mean? It's, it's true. Look at her posing right now. You can grab a shot of that now, Alec. Hurry, real quick. Turn around. Real quick. Oh, you missed it, Alec. God damn it, man. You've got to have cat-like reflexes on a day like this. Like a law enforcement cheetah. Yeah, like a law enforcement cheetah. Um, and the way we treat these people is, is like Russian police officers. We're stern, but we're fair. Yeah, go go now. So if you have a great body, go now, Alec. Go, 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 go. Here it is. Grab it, grab it. 
Just getting ready to pose, brother. You're Alex. Uh, so our producer, Alex, is a young man. He's he's you, very 21, polite. 22? This is your this is your last spring break because you're going to graduate next year. Does yeah, that you, feel weird to you? It does. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look, I'm happy we're at least bringing you your you know some form of spring break at home, because my God, dude, the amount of Almond Brothers I heard on the drive down here with the windows open and the not giving a fucks has been amazing. I actually, I look. 80% of our audience of military and first responders probably shouldn't be saying this. I cracked a white claw on the way. I just said, fuck it. Yeah. I, you know? I start. I mean, I start smoking weed at 8 a.m. every day, so I can't really. <laughs> the fucking way you look at me for some kind of judgment? No. It's not going to happen. I didn't know if we we're going to be alive here in the next 48 hours, so I was like, eh, there's a white claw next to me. Might as well open, pop the top on that, if you will. Yeah. Get loose. Look, that whole saying, uh, live each day like there's no tomorrow whatever yeah you know probably may want to start doing that now <laughs> <laughs> did you ever get a chance to go on spring break oh yeah yeah oh yeah. you did in high school and college yeah where'd you go uh one time i went to myrtle beach oh shit yeah myrtle just south of here i don't remember any of that if you if you're not familiar with myrtle down here in the south they've got these commercials that run and it's a shitty jingle that just says, I live for Myrtle Beach days. You can tell it's a guy like a, an 80s cover band singer, probably in his early, early 50s, nasal cavity blown out of his fucking skull from so much cocaine. Yep. I live for Myrtle Beach days. That'll be $240. Uh, Venmo me that immediately, and then you can have all rights to that song. Yep. Myrtle goes fucking ballistic, dude. Did you have a good time down there? I I I am told I did, but who? <laughs> like when you're young, who knows, man? It's the, fucking blacked out everywhere. Oh yeah, the thing I love about Myrtle is um, you can fucking you can go out and have like a normal nice beach day, and then just get fucking shivved at night in a bar. Like somebody will take a rolling rock, bust that open on top of the bar, and slice your fucking chest open. Yeah, when I was in 82nd replacement in uh, Fayetteville. Mm-hmm. Replacement is like uh, where you show up to get assigned whatever unit you're going to go to or whatever. Sure. Um, a guy came back from one weekend and he had been stabbed through like the trapezoid, and his whole this whole shit was swollen up. Like just from he was just walking around with a twelve pack by himself on the beach, and five yeah. dudes jumped and stabbed him. <laughs> oh god, dude! That was that would that would have been 2006, I think. That's the beauty of Myrtle. Yeah. Mine was, uh, so we started off in, we were big Panama City people. Because I was from right outside of Atlanta, so it was about a five-hour drive down there to, right. to PC Beach. And um, that was a high school jaunt. And looking back at it, I can't believe my parents let me go to fucking spring break in Panama City in high school. Yeah, I'm pretty sure somebody died when I was in my high school. And- they did, yeah. There was always one death, like, per high school, per yeah. year. And it was always, like, drunk off a balcony or... Uh, in college, it started I, to be like GHB death. I think mine was uh, ecstasy and GHB or something like that. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. G, you go into a fucking G-hole, and you're like, holy shit. Um, first spring break, let's see. We all drove down, and uh, there was rules up on it. Like, there was rules, like, outside the doors and on the, you know, the hotel thing. They asked for all of the money up front because they uh, knew every yeah, kid yeah, was yeah. getting thrown out. yeah. And I, we lasted, so it was, a, it was seven days. We lasted three before we got kicked out. And the toilet had broke within an hour of being there, right? And we were, you were talking about a shit stacked. Shit castle. shit castle, that's what it is. Um, we didn't have a choice but to do a shit castle. You know what that is? No. It's where you take a shit and then, you know, you can't, like for us, we just couldn't flush it. Some people voluntarily don't do it. You take a shit and then you put toilet paper on top of that, and then you re shit, and then whoever else has got a shit. And like, this went on for three days. Mm. It was so high by the end of the third day that we couldn't shut the lid. Like, the lid, was, the lid wouldn't close on the shit. So, we had a keg party at the, the hotel, probably squeezed in 30, 40 kids in a, in a two, like one of those two queen bedroom, yeah. you know, setups. <clears throat> Way too many people. PCB uh, police came in, busted the whole place, and uh, 
they're trying to write down all of our underage drinking tickets, you know, as we're all lined up or whatever. And one of the cops was like, hey, man, uh, you stay here. I got to I got to take a piss. We saw him go into the restroom and immediately start gagging. Once he tried to attempt to piss inside the toilet, he goes, Jesus Christ, you guys are fucking disgusting. And I was like, well. Shit, Castle Holmes. You know, I, nothing we can do. My experience was nothing like that. No, no, yeah. No, I st- We stayed in what was essentially an Airbnb, but it was like a whole like it was a giant, probably ten bedroom house. Oh wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, shit. I went to a pretty. The, most of the kids that went to school with me were wealthy. I okay. was I was poor as shit. Gotcha. But it's the same school that Kevin Garnett went to. And, oh right, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Orlando Jones. Actually, a lot of people have gone there, but it's like uh, all those. Kids were pretty wealthy. Ours was more or less, that was just what Panama City Beach was, I guess, because it was all hotels on the beach and then, you know, fake IDs and all that other bullshit. Um, but yeah, the, we had the shit castle. Once we got nuked from that, we got thrown out. Um, we went to other friends of ours' rooms and all that other shit. So, like, it was kids sleeping on the floor, facing the carpet, not enough sheets, pillows, all that shit. And it was a fucking blast. It was the best. And if you were able to hook up with a girl or fuck somebody amongst, like, all of the bodies, then they would hang the used condoms outside the door. It's kind of like a – it's very Braveheart, you know? No. Very William Wallace, like, hang, hang the limbs on all four corners. No, that's you know? disgusting. It's disgusting. Yeah. We were disgusting human beings, and uh, I'm not going to apologize for any of it, but it was one of the greatest times of all time. Now with the end of the apocalypse – or the, the beginning of the apocalypse upon us. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we're going to have any of that anymore. Um, look, no one can stop Americans from being pieces of shit. I'm glad you said that. So on Ross Patterson Revolution earlier this morning, I had a debate with Jesse about this. It was a Hollywood actress that posted, hey, man, I'm going to fucking live my life and take my kid to gymnastics. Evangeline Lilly from uh, Lost. Okay. The hot one from Lost. Yeah. And <laughs> Jesse was like, can you believe that bullshit? And I was like, eh. Who's to stop somebody from living their own life? I was like, what do you fucking tell Danny to stop doing something? He's going to tell you to go fuck yourself or to get fucked. Right. So yep. during all of this shit, whatever happens, happens. Four states are now shut down. We're on Friday afternoon at <clears throat> 2 o'clock. Uh, Ohio is supposed to be shutting down soon, 5, 6. Probably the rest of these will be shut down by the time this episode airs on Monday. What are you going to do? Are you going to go out to the beach? Are you going to live your life, or are you going to fucking hang out inside? Hanging out inside is living my life. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't do anything anyways. I hang out with, like, three people, and uh, they're not here. No. Except for you, and you're not going to be doing shit either, so. All right. I'll sit at my house and play fucking video games and get high as shit the whole time and drink lean. That's what I do. Yeah. But that's not, this isn't all that different than my normal life. No. No, it's be not, honest. to be honest with you. Uh, me, I'll, like, I'll miss this shit. I came out here during lunch the other day and just sat for, like, 27 minutes. I knew I had a 27-minute lunch break, and I was like, fuck it, man. Shirt off, all my brothers on, I'm letting my dick hang out in the wind, and I'm going to miss that shit. And I told my wife earlier, I was like, yo, I don't really care if, if the shit's shut down. I'm going to come out and do it anyways. She was like, you're a part of the problem. And I was like, no, I'm the solution. Um, just because you start to get to a point, like, with California. They said they're not reopening until April 19th, they mm-hmm. said today. Uh, or Los Angeles in particular. I'm imagining it's going to be inactive for the, the entire state. That's a fucking month, dude. It's a fucking month. Yeah, it's a long time to not do anything. Yeah, and stay inside your house. Yeah, but, well, that's why we've been pumping out shows pretty well, much every day. So we'll be going live and, and doing shit every day. Um, you know, they're, they've paired it down to work essentials or... or What's essential, I guess, to the world or the community and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, like even if everything gets shut down here, yep. we're, we're not going to get shut down. No. So podcasting was on that list for California. And yeah. I was surprised. It's I was on like, New York's list, too. Is it really? Yeah. Fuck you. So we'll be live with you every day. Um, how many employees we have left at the end of it, we have no idea. Yeah, they've. Uh, we're, we're expecting about 40 to 50 of them to die. We only have three, <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to have to keep hiring people, and they're going to keep dying. Yeah. So, Al- is- Alec, you'll be dead by the end of this weekend, end probably. Of the week, yeah. Alec, the guy who's shooting the – our producer who's shooting this video right now, you'll, you'll be dead in an you hour. You look like you've got AIDS right now, to be honest. Are your brothers still alive? Can we hire them? They are still alive. Do okay, they, great. Do they so have we'll just any- start going through your family members and then paying them, and then uh, 
and then see what we can do. That's uh, actually a compliment. It is. You should be amped about you this. You stupid Alex. bitch. You should be amped about yeah. this. Uh, today's episode is brought to you by expressvpn.com forward slash drink it bros. There's no time than the present to protect your digital butthole. Then by going to expressvpn.com forward slash drink bros, everybody's trying to steal your financial data. Is that something you're worried about? Look, I actually meant to bring this up a couple of weeks ago, but two weeks ago, I got another letter from the fucking, uh, from the government saying that my, my identity had been compromised again. My social security number once again. Really? It's been compromised. This is the third time. And every single one of them have been, the first time was the military. The second time was Homeland Security. And the third time was the fucking VA. No shit. Like every single level of government that I've been involved in has fucked me on this. That's hilarious. And you man. remember my fucking debit card got uh, stolen. Yeah. Not stolen, but it got compromised, what, right around that same time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, the Hillary the f- Clinton campaign in charge. No, that was yours. I'm yeah, talking about my mine. personal one. Five five dollars. My personal one <laughs> got compromised. <laughs> like my fucking regular bank card, my debit card. So man. I got that letter in the mail. That was a week after I found out my bank card was fucked up. It's crazy. Fuck these people. Yeah, fuck these people, man. Um, as always, we're brought to you by ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. They're, they're now giving 25% off everything in the entire store. It was 20. Now it's 25. Um, go there. If you need a fucking mattress, pillows, sheets, covers, adjustable bases, now is the time to do it. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. They've got a 36 month pay as you go program uh, with no interest. And that's key. So no, no matter how long this shit lasts, if you want a fucking mattress or to live your goddamn life like Rihanna, do it, man. Um, hey, you busy spinning that paper. I don't know if that's what she says. Um, I feel like chasing. T.I. was playing a lot on the way down here. Chasing. People were going spring break jams, man. Chasing. Yeah. That paper. Chasing that paper. Yeah. Uh, go to go to Drinking Bros. God damn it. I am, there is so much ass here. I'm distracted, Alec. I am... I'm off my game. I am bidening it. Get a shot of that ass real quick. Just, it's hard, dude. It is hard to pay attention right now. It really is spring break in this motherfucker. If you saw the girls behind you, I almost feel bad we're shooting in this direction so you can't see this. And they're just bending over, almost begging you, Alec, a young 21-year-old buck like yourself, to get a shot of that ass. Do it for the viewers. I'll tell you when. I'll tell you when, Alec, okay? Um... (laughs) Who was it? Ghostbed.com forward slash stringing bros. Uh, next up, we got KillCliffCBD.com. Yeah, they're running a special. It's 30% off yep. right now. Yep. You, use the code Drinker Bros. KillCliffCBD.com. It's the best shit in the business. Um, they just, everybody's sitting at home, freaked out and blah, blah, blah. They want to relax some people and, you know. They, wanna, they want people to dip their danglers in some. Uh, CBD. It apparently relaxes your nuts. I mean, right now is a good time just to fucking. Right now is a good time just to, uh, you know, put a little vodka in there. Yeah, it's a great time. Just load it up. I, 10 a.m. Give or take. Start at 10 a.m. Yeah, and see how long you could stay awake. I heard they were shutting the liquor stores down, uh, like in America. I hope that's not true, or there's going to be some fucking riots, dude. I've got so much liquor at my house. Do you really? Yes. Did you stock up for this occasion? No. Oh, you just no. Just I'm just general? a piece of shit. Yeah. Uh, I love it. Yeah. I love it. Uh, look, kids, if you're out there and you need some CBD to calm your nerves with the fucking kiddos around, go to KillCliffCBD.com. Promo code Drinking Bros. Thirty percent off everything uh, there. All the cans, all the cans you can imagine, and uh, free shipping, which is key. Knocks that shit down to like a buck fifty an episode. How are those cam- cameras rocking in this uh, wind, Alec? Not well. Not well, huh? Are they going in or out? L- let us know. All, all of the things, huh? Well, we got, a, we got a camera on Dan, which is good. You might have to roll solo on that, that middle cam, dog. Is it, is it good? Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, D'Anthony, you st- is your prediction still hold up, by the way? What's that? Last, last, uh, last week you said six to eight weeks on all this shit. Yeah, I would say about right, yeah. That's Still. that's why that's why they're shutting down everything because they want to make it quicker. Like, okay. honestly, it's not as pe- people get the idea because they're fucking canceling things and and putting quarantines into effect that this is more serious than it is. No, they're just trying to truncate the timeline 
so the economy is not as badly affected. That's all it is. Okay. Like, it's not the, vi- the virus didn't all of a sudden get more dangerous. As a matter of fact, the mortality rate shrinks a little bit every day that we find more cases. All right. Uh, well, there's a rumor out there now that uh, they found potentially some form of uh, cure, that at least slowing it down. It's a malaria drug. Mm. Which one? Um, um, I don't know, but I, I know the like, other company is Gilead. Like Gilead's quinine? Gilead's got something. Yes. Yeah, it starts with a Q. Yes. What's it Quin- called? Quinine. Yeah. 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 We used to have to take it when we deployed. It makes you have crazy fucked up dreams, so I hope that's the case. Is that real? Yeah. It's awesome. Damn it, man. Yep. I had a fucking weird dream last night. Uh, I'm not going to get into it, but uh, it, it involved a three-legged elephant, two midgets, a contortionist from Tucson, Arizona, and uh, this is a child with a baseball bat. No ball, no nothing. What? Wasn't sure what he was going to do with that. Maybe beat the elephant to death, but uh, shit's gotten real weird for me because I'm just taking a bunch of shit. Yeah, same. Look, we're bored. Yeah, there was some NyQuil left over, and I was like, man, all right, let's give it a go. Let's give it. I, I don't need it, but let's give it a go. Well, if you're out there and you've got drugs, you know our post office box number. So Our P.O. box number is uh, 3973, Wilmington, North Carolina, 28406. Send whatever drugs in you can. Yeah. How big is too big to, to be wearing a thong? I'm looking at this girl off camera here uh, in the black right there. I don't think there's too big. I mean, as long as she's happy. You enjoy a fat ass? What's your, what's your whole sitch on that? I like small women. Small women? With, I like small athletic women. Okay. Yeah. I like a fat ass on a girl. And it changed over time, dude. I, was, I wasn't like that, and I think society changed me. Maybe. Right around when, like, Kim Kardashian started blowing up and shit, and I was like, oh, shit. That's something I haven't seen before mm-hmm. in a white girl. Uh, that's what I got into, man. Well, I was one of those people who switched later in life. Maybe, uh, maybe you didn't switch. Just the availability or the prominence of that particular body style became greater. No. You know what I mean? Look, I, I here, definitely switched. This is a social experiment. Okay. Watch Sopranos, the whole fucking series. Yeah. And look at how the strippers change in the early 2000s. So they start out giant, enormous fucking fake titties. Yep. And... Big asses with the fucking, like, huge asses with the fucking high-waisted thong. Sure. Not the high-waisted, but the straps go higher than, than normal. Yeah, yeah. And then they get smaller. They get, like, Paris Hilton looking over time. Ah, oh, Like, with shit. no hips, smaller asses. You're right. Tits, but, but prettier. But it, if you think about it, though, that's defined by celebrities. So, like, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. kind of like, remember late 80s with, like, Poison and all that shit? And then, fuck, Baywatch. Pamela well, Anderson. Yeah. 90s were huge fake tits, right? And that was like, yeah, ring, ring, ring. Girls, girls, girls. Hasselhoff, yeah. huge titties. Yep. Fucking Tommy Lee's ding dong, slapping boat horns. If you but, haven't seen that, when he mm. takes his dick out, that sex tape, and he slaps his own boat horn and honks it with his dong, that's when I became a real Tommy Lee fan. For real. If that bird shits on me, I'm pulling out my fucking my, nine millimeter. I'm going to shoot it. Get eight. a shot of that bird, Alec. Up top there. Right up top. Right there. Take a look. Alec, Alec what are you take doing? Take a fucking look at the bird, dude. You can walk in front of camera. There's no cords. No one will see oh, you. Oh, now there's two. God fucking damn it. Yeah. It's only a matter of time. There's a, We're going to be on that camera anyways, Alex. You can walk in front of it. There's a conspiracy theory that uh, the only reason the government is shutting everything down is so they can change the batteries and all the birds. Oh, because they're, they're not real. Yeah. Well, we know they're not real. <laughs> Just saying. That's one of the consp- that's one of many conspiracy theories about all this. I want to go back to your stripper body type thing. Early two thousands, Paris Hilton was huge. Yeah. Uh, Lindsay Lohan. Now it's the fucking fit girl. Yeah. That's the thing now. But I've always been into that. Okay. That's so always been my thing. I wasn't because it was a little too much for me. Like a little too 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 dudeish for me. A little mm-hmm. little too strong. But. Uh, the fat ass thing was what was kind of my era when I was ready to settle down. I was like, oh, shit. I want a fatter ass in my face, dude. Yeah. Well, it's um, good to know. Yeah, it's important. It's spring break, dude. Because if, if you're out here today, right before the beach is shut down, you know, you got one shot at it tonight. You might as well shoot your shot. 
It's like we always say on this show. A famous quote by Lee Harvey Oswald. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. It was Wayne Gretzky that said that. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, no, I think it was Lee Harvey Oswald. Uh, before him, I believe it was uh, John Wilkes Booth who said that as well. Wayne Gretzky? Yep. Yeah, well, Wayne stole it from John Wilkes Booth. And then Michael Scott stole it from Wayne Gretzky, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I kind of, I'm still going to lean towards Booth on this one. He kind of got shit kicked off, you know? As far as assassinating presidents, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It's fair. You think they had a uh, spring break in the Civil War? No. <laughs> no, I don't. No. <laughs> People you think that, it was just called life break. That's the thing about society, though. <laughs> like the the more we advance, the more comfortable it gets. Yeah. And then we start focusing on different things, like our feelings and shit. True. But I'm not into that. No, I know you're not. So I just sit at home and play video games, and then I come to work and talk shit to this piece of shit right here. Yeah. I was telling him earlier. I was trying to teach him how to be a creep in public. You know oh, I mean? uh, Alec, our, our young 21-year-old producer. Yeah. 22. He's, well, no, you're you 21. 22 or 21? No, he'll be 20, 20, 22 in September. So uh, I was trying to teach him some finer points about how to be a creep in public. Yeah. But mostly it's just observational skills. And I'm like, look, you look like a fucking creepy weirdo. You may as well lean into it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you've got that look. You could definitely... You look like a registered sex offender for sure. No. He's oh, yeah. Good. Look, at he's wearing black fucking... Mid calf socks. socks with fucking gray shoes. That's true. Blue shorts and a fucking look at him. He looks like he's a fucking rapist, dude. Very Andrew Cunanan of you. You have a very Cunanan look. You I'm know pretty. Who that is Alec. <laughs> he's the guy who killed uh, Gianni Versace. Thank you. Um, if you didn't see that special, so the, uh, the the people who did that on FX, they did People versus O.J. Simpson. They mm. did uh, Versace, and they're also doing um, the impeachment one. Uh, Monica Lewinsky. Mm. Is the next one that's coming out for FX? What? Ryan Murphy. Okay. Um, the reason I bring this up is uh, in that Gianni Versace one, like I was amped to watch it because I know this guy pushes it. There is a scene where Cunanan walks in to a Miami hotel. Yep. And uh, he duct tapes the face, the whole f- face and head of an old man um, in there. And it's like a sexual thing. And um, here's the beauty of it. I hired that guy. He was in FDR, American Badass. He played uh, Eisenhower in it. Mm-hmm. And it was really fucking weird to see his whole face and head duct taped by a gay man in that. This guy in real life is definitely not that dude. And I thought to myself, he's probably got kids. What do you say on a series that big when it's just like, hey, watch the, the Cunanan thing on, um, on, <laughs> on FX tonight. Your father's going to be in there getting his whole head duct taped and then pissed on and then murdered by a gay guy. Yeah, I wonder what it's like, especially if that was your first huge role and you wanted your family to see it. Yeah. Like, hey, you guys want to come watch me get peed on? Hell yeah. Hell yeah, brother. No. It would be awesome. Hey, Alec, uh, turn around and get a shot of the top of that house right there, that, the one with the silver shingles on it. Yeah. If you're not subscribed on YouTube already, go to Drinker Bros Podcast on YouTube. All your shows will be on there. We have endless content coming out. Um, I was, by the way, I was surprised to see Dude Perfect go live last night. Yeah, why? Um, why is they, that? They've never gone live ever in the history of the Yeah, channel. but everybody is like. I know. Everybody needs something to do. Sports are gone. Uh, they, they did a. There's a, no movies. You're not going out to restaurants. They did a basketball three point shootout mm. last night, um, a soccer tournament. It was fucking awesome, dude. Big fan of Dude Perfect. So the shot of that guy's house I told you to get, Alec, I, that's the neighbor across the street from me. Um, they have uh, rented out their house for numerous production shoots. One of them was that uh, SEAL Team 6 show on, what was it, AMC C or a and I don't know. Which one? It was SEAL Team S- or no, Yeah, I think it was SEAL Team 6. It was uh, Walt Goggins. I've never seen it. SEAL Team 6, yeah. So, I've never seen it, but I love him. Oh, he's awesome. And uh, so a bunch of people were watching that show. So my neighbors rented out that house. And I think the, actually, I think the guy's a fucking drinking bro. Um, and I don't know if we've told this story before, but they were psyched because they were shooting there. And it was just like, oh, man, it's going to be amazing. And they all gathered around to watch the pilot episode, the first episode on TV. The night that it aired, we had rented out their, their house. And uh, the guy answers the phone in the kitchen. And he is just fucking the shit out of this girl on the kitchen counter in their house. Imagine being with your entire family, and that's what you see. Hey, we rented her house. 
And there's some girl just getting railed on your kitchen counter in there. Fine with that. <laughs> What's, I don't understand the problem with that. <laughs> the, the counter that he used to eat off of as a kid is now getting railed on by uh, somebody on SEAL Team 6. Look, when you're a 12-year-old, 13-year-old boy, yeah. you do a lot of weird shit around your house. Yeah. No one ever talks about it, but you do weird shit with your dick. Like, I, I, I suppose not to, like, I didn't want to do it on any family memorabilia, you know? No, of course not, but, you know, things happen. They do happen. And you, you can, you can imagine, now that you're an adult, how things, you can go down a porn rabbit hole and end up in a place that you didn't want to be. So oh, imagine yeah. when you're Real younger, quick. when you're 12, 13, you don't understand really what's happening. You're trying to figure shit out. It's look, a lot of weird stuff could go down there. So for me, looking back on that, if I walked into my childhood home and some chick was getting railed, I'd be like, I should have done that. <laughs> should have been me. But it wasn't. So what are you gonna do? <laughs> you think about that? Do you think about the girls you didn't fuck? No. Now that you're now that the apocalypse is upon us, you ever look back and be like, oh man, there was that one night I should have I would have just said that one extra thing to her. Maybe it could have went down. I've never tried that hard. Oh, really? No. Shit, that's all I did was try, dude. I'm not I'm not into trying. Yeah. I, I gave it my all every single down. Went no. after, dude, I went after I went after some big some big ones too that were way outside of my league. Uh, I went after Christine Aguilera one night. I went all in for about 45 minutes. I gave her my best possible fucking game, dude. In my prime, my best possible game. And I, it seemed like she was down, dude. I thought for sure. I was like, man, this is going to go down with Christina Aguilera. I thought for sure, man, I had it on lock. And it was uh, it, what I thought was like her assistance behind me, like for the last maybe 30, 35 minutes of the conversation. Um, and at the end of the conversation, I said, look, I think we should get out of here and try to, try to make some magic of our own. I'm, I, I dabble in singing, you know. Um, I'm, I'm recording quality, but I'll need some, some form of engineer if you want to record a duet or something. She was like, yeah, so that's my boyfriend behind you, and he's been standing there the entire time. And I was like, you didn't want to tell me that? You didn't want to give me the, uh, the go-ahead on that or no? Nothing? Um, but I'm always, I've always been trying. I feel like people that are dating should, should wear the same color shirts or something. So you know that way you know. Yeah. Well, but here's what, what I. What are thought. you laughing at, motherfucker? Yeah, she like wearing a jersey that has each other's names on it yeah. or something. I, she was engaged at that time, and they ended up getting married. By the way, the marriage didn't last. Big surprise. Probably because she let fifty other dudes talk to her for forty-five minutes right in front of him. He was not an attractive man to say the least. But uh, yeah, man, I gave it my best. I was always giving it my best every down. I'm more of a like to see what happens kind of guy. Spring break, I gave my best game every single time. I feel like you're playing your your best game at spring break is like going to a mini golf range and pulling out a driver. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's unnecessary, guy. The Just com- wait. It's not. The competition is really, really steep. Ah, come on, spring break, it's not. Man. You got a bunch of dudes. Look, I'm sure. Fuck, man. When you guys got off a of deployment or whatever, like, mm-hmm. how crazy did that shit get? Well, I'm not trying to fish in a lake that I know everybody's been shitting in. So I didn't look for girlfriends in Fayetteville, North Carolina. All right? Well, take... Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, like, take Fort Bragg. Like, There's no way. Fuck that. Did, was everybody trying to fuck the waitresses at those places? Everybody's trying to fuck everybody everywhere on any military installation. Just that, that's just how it is, right? Yeah. That's crazy, man. It is, yeah. <laughs> I mean, what are you going to do? That's just like you have. How many of those girls got knocked up? How many of those waitresses? A lot of them, yeah. And they're all married to the dude for like two and a half or so years. Is that how it works? Yeah. And then what? What happens after that? That's it. Well, the guy is severely in debt because he couldn't afford the wedding. Okay. He couldn't afford the kid, and he damn sure couldn't afford the thirty-seven percent APR in the Camaro he just bought when he got back. <laughs> right. So now he's climbing his way out of debt. And a dead end career in an infantry that doesn't exist anymore. Ugh. So it's like I don't know what he's doing, but he's got job security. Yeah, as long as you make rank at the right time, you can stay in forever. How did you make it out without getting anybody, anybody knocked up or married or any of that shit? To my uh, knowledge, you've never been married, right? No. 
No, I just I. Again, I didn't fish in that water. I was busy doing stuff. Like I dated people for sure, but I wasn't like. I'm not stupid. I was I was older also, and I like I understood how pregnancy worked uh-huh. and avoided that. Okay, L- let me ask you this then: Was there girls that were trying to trap guys because they knew? Yeah, but it's like. Yes. The yep. short answer is yes. Absolutely yes. Oof. There's a saying in Fayetteville, you either were born there or somebody left you there. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That so, makes sense. Uh, the women, it's not, it's slim pickings, I'll say that. Did you watch the Love is Blind show on uh, Netflix? No, no. Um, the reason why I ask is the, there was two people that ended up getting married, and the, the weird thing about that show is it was shot like two years ago. So they've been married for like a year and a half. Oh, right? really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and didn't so know that. They just aired it and it blew up and like now they're kind of stuck because they have to go back and, you know, obviously they want multiple seasons and all that shit. Yeah. But like the interesting part about it to me was knowing that these people, their relationships had lasted that long. So when they went back and did the reunion show, they were married for like a year and a half apiece. Mm. And one of them was a military chick. Mm. And I, I was surprised. I was like, oh, shit. They always, everybody we know usually gets divorced, like, right away. Yeah. Let alone get married in, what is it, five days or whatever it was? Five or six days on that show? I have no idea. Um, Yeah, so it lasted, dude. Good for them. Yeah. I guess. Strange, right? I don't don't, don't think that marriage is probably all that difficult. Would you You ever do it? Oh, yeah, for sure. So you would... Would you go on a show, meet somebody who oh, you no, can't see? Oh, no, not that. No. Okay. Fuck, that's stupid. No. No. But I, I don't think... I think people make... Uh, you, you have to decide that what the end state is, right? No matter what happens, this is this works for us, so let's just do this. Yeah. If that's your end state for both of you, and it's, you know, not not everybody could do that, I guess, but... If you if you just assume it's like gravity, like I know if I jump out of this thing, I'm going to end up down here for sure. Right. That's how it works. So I can plan around that. Mm-hmm. Not just my life, but I can plan emotionally and physically and financially around that. Right. But people don't accept that now. No. And there's. Now I'm not saying you should. I don't have a problem with divorce. Sometimes you make a bad decision, you got to get out of it. But uh, I, I don't know. People are just people are super dumb these days. Yeah, and in the, the military, like they're all young as fuck. They don't know shit. Yeah, uh, this chick looked like she was maybe twenty seven, twenty eight, somewhere in that range. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, that one lasted. And then there was another dude, uh, a white guy who was a scientist, who married this black chick. And um, yeah, I saw that one. Y- yeah, and it was. I think that's why the show was a hit. Was because you really had two people who were completely fucking different and dude they were ge- they're genuinely in love and married for like a year and a half and i was like man i couldn't sit behind a fucking wall and try to guess at a girl because like as soon as she pops out if she's not hot shit's fucked up yeah i'd be done right then same dude like if she can't if i don't give a fuck about uh that uh uh what's it called what's that jack black movie oh uh shallow how shallow how yeah yeah if if Unless there's some kind of supernatural force m- making me see her as hot, <laughs> done, dude. <laughs> the, I don't. The, it just doesn't work. There's no way. There was one guy who got a super fucking hot girl, and f- for whatever reason, like, because she was down to bang like all day long, and he was not, and uh, she called him out on it live on the show, mm-hmm. and that has gone viral completely. He just People, needs some testosterone, man. I don't know. He just seems like kind of a pussy. To be honest with you, he might be, but uh, yeah. that's a weird place to choose to walk, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> just right, right behind us. Social oh, distancing man. doesn't matter to some. No, um, oh, I'm not worried about that. Screws in right behind us. Just like the jean shorts, especially on that guy. Get a shot of the jean shorts, Alec. There it is. Those cut off? Yeah, they are. You're goddamn right, they are. That's a home job. Alec, you're still feeling way too nervous about filming people in real time. If somebody tries to start some shit with you, I will take care of yeah, it. You understand? In, you're in film school, dude. I've got like, a gun, for Christ's sake. you got to steal these shots. Look at homegirl. Now now get a shot. Go. Go to your back left. Go. Go, 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 go. Real quick. Real quick. Go, go, go. Look at the posing for the Instagram. 
Look, oh, we'll get it now, dude. She keeps posing for the gram. I'm talking. She's been at it the whole time we've dude, been recording. We've been going for 45 minutes now. She's been going. Look at this. Go, Alec. Now, go, go, go. Look at the poses. Look just at the over poses, and over, dude. Man. You know what the funny thing is, though? That's distracting. Like 10 years ago, even five years ago, we may have seen somebody like that out in public and been like, who is this fucking asshole? Yeah, now but now it seems that like girl probably makes beach. 20 grand a month doing this shit. <laughs> you fucking kidding me? God damn it. She's probably one of those ass models on Instagram. Do you know those? No. I didn't either. So a buddy of mine started dating one of them. And an he goes, ass uh, model? An ass model. And I go, the fuck is that? And he goes, oh, she just does ass photos on Instagram. And I was like, well, then what? And he goes, well, then she sells them through uh, Patreon or what's the what's Twitch? the other site? Fan oh, page uh, or only fans. Only fans. Only fans, yeah. So I was like, all right, sweet. So how do you feel about that? And he was like, well, I mean, it's just her ass. So, like, I guess I'm cool with it. I wouldn't care. Yeah. The fuck do I care? Sell yeah. your underwear. I don't give a shit. That's what, when Christmas Abbott was on. Yeah. We told her, you know, I didn't know about the foot fetish thing with the wiki... Wiki feet? Wiki feet, yeah. I didn't know that was a thing. And there was over, what, 3,000, 300,000 images of her? There's a lot of images, yeah. Yeah. She should make a fucking bidness out of that. Yeah. If you haven't listened to that episode, go back and listen to the last Christmas Abbott episode. It was like maybe two or three weeks ago. It was fucking crazy, man. Yeah. Crazy. And in these, look, in times like these, I don't blame you if you want to make money from people around the world selling fucking dirty socks and shit. Do what you want. I don't give a shit. Yeah. Um, but the posing that it, that continues to go on here is really on an, on another level. She's been at it for, and it's not for us, by the way. No, it she she's been at it phone. for almost an hour now. Yes, on her own camera. Yeah, that's at this point at like the forty five minute mark. I feel like you got it. Not only do I feel like you got it, but I gotta, I almost gotta say that this feels like she's selling these. Yeah, she's not doing this for free. There's no way. Because you said that you knew a lot of girls. Since everybody's out of a job right now, who are I've seen a shit. lot of it on Instagram. Yeah, just like people who are not even people I know. I just see it popping up a lot. Yeah, um, people sharing other people's pages and shit like that. Like, oh, some so and so's got an OnlyFans now. I'm like, oh wow, really? Okay. Yeah. I guess everybody's getting into the business now. But hey, that's we talked about this on the news, um, and earlier in the week, uh, last week as well, about. The transition in business models that are mm-hmm. going to happen, like telemedicine, for example, is going to become a thing. Yeah. People are going to stop going into the doctor and they're going to start calling them and doing teleconferences and then going to a private place to get a lab done if they need a lab. Right. Unless it's something you need to physically be there for. Like- yeah. So in North Carolina, it's weird, man. They've they've tried to limit like the, the number of opiates and shit. Yeah. So in North Carolina, like I, like I take Xanax. They may, I, I physically have to go into the fucking... Xanax is a benzo. It's not a, not an opiate. Uh, wh- whatever, man. I don't, I'm not a fucking physician. I never pretended to be one. Never played one in a movie either. I'm um, not either. I'm just a drug addict. I pl- played one on spring break in the bedroom, though. I can tell you that. Uh, but I have to go in every single time for the prescription. And they've got to ask me like a series of questions now, like if I feel fucking suicidal or <clears throat> all that shit. And then there's a limit on how many you can get. Yeah, but you don't have to go into the office for that. You could do that over fucking Skype. I don't know. No, yes, you can do that over they Skype. Take, they take your blood pressure, and they do this other shit when you're in there, and it's just like... You, have to, you would have to go into a lab for some of it. Yeah, so I was like, is that part of it or whatever? Like, I don't want to fucking give blood. So you're still going to have to go somewhere. Mm-hmm. You know? But the lab is not like you just walk in, hand them a piece of paper, they take your shit, and you leave. Right. There's, there's no waiting in line. Yeah. No, I mean, fuck it. Oh, uh, yeah, you're, you're welcome to it. Happy spring break. The apocalypse is, is upon us, but we're enjoying today. We're enjoying today. Let's get wet. Let's get wet. I took a fucking beer from a stranger yesterday. I don't give a shit. Uh, Dan, you seem in awe of what's going on right now. I'm irritated by that whole scene there. Why? Have something more clever to say. She's got an Old Roche, old Roche uh, shirt on, which I dig. Yeah. Shout out to Old Row. I dig their fucking shit. I follow them on Instagram. Yeah, they're pretty funny. I mean, that's Barstool. Yeah. Oh, is it? They own them? I think so, yeah. Man, um, I'm irritated when people heckle me or talk shit and it's not funny or clever. I'm not. I don't like it. I'm not. I'm, I, I like being heckled. I just like give me something new. Years of stand up. I'm used to it. Um, I've been watching that Hillary doc on uh, mm-hmm. Hulu because I'm fucking bored and at the end of my rope with shit already. I'll never be that bored. Well, I, I will say this. There's some interesting shit in there that 
Um, I, it's all fucking one-sided, and it. You'll if you hated Hillary before, like we do, you'll hate her even more after this, because she's as phony and fake as fuck as you think she would be, and it's all one-sided and, and it's all bullshit, right? But they do show her on the campaign trail. So when she's out shaking hands with people, there is Trump supporters that, you know, she th she thinks are their people, and they literally tell her to go fuck herself right in front of her face. And it's like every other person, you're like, <clears throat> oh, shit. Is it a real Hillary supporter? Mm -hmm. They were like, hey, fuck you, Hillary. L literally, and you're just like, oh, shit. Uh, and to put up with that city after city everywhere you go, there is something to it where you're like, man, you've got to be built for that because that's that's some intense shit. Well, also, it's no, not, she's not there's not enough security. No, there's definitely not enough security. She's not built for it. She just has a massive ego, and she thinks all those people are deplorables. Like, she thinks that's a garbage person. That would be like some crackhead running up to you and saying, your car's a piece of shit. You'd be like, you live under a rock, bro. Yeah. The thing that I was surprised with is, is was the lack of security, though. Because I, I looked at it, and I was like, man, any one of those people could have took out a fucking knife and murk them. Yeah. Um, and it was surprising. I thought they gave you, like, bigger teams than that. Or maybe they're just more trusting. Um, but that was a surprise when I watched it. Uh, they got into the, the bill thing, obviously. <laughs> You know, the Bill Clinton thing and his dick sucked. And um, that whole shit. So, you know, there, there, there was parts of it, elements that were interesting where I'm like, all right, cool, I didn't know this or this was going on at that There's time. There's no way he just got his dick sucked, right? No. Come no on. Way. There's no way. Has anybody ever, did he or Monica ever admit that they actually fucked? I think she did. Because um, there's but no he, way. He never did. And he held firm in this, this documentary as well. Um, but yeah, the, the surprising, the biggest surprise for me in it was the impeachment trial because mm -hmm. it reminded me of a lot of what happened this year with Trump where mm -hmm. they just didn't have really anything no. other than him lying about getting his dick sucked, which nobody cared, you know? No. Um, but it reminded me of the same thing and all of the, it's funny, all the Democrats in that video mm -hmm. or in the uh, documentary went back, uh, on camera to do these interviews obviously 20 years later and they were like you know the republicans didn't have anything and they were trying to force this and we knew it was going to fuck them in the elections mm -hmm. and, it, and it was just like hey was this shot last year because you're literally saying what we what just happened you know back in january <sighs> there's just no sense of uh irony with, with those folks no they don't they have no idea what they've done to themselves but looking back on it, like, the Republican, we had fucking no idea what they were doing either. And it was just like, how do they expect that shit to stick? When I watched it, I was like, I don't give a shit if a president's getting his dick sucked. Mm. Fuck, I welcome it. There should be a whole goddamn committee of people mm. out there getting their dick sucked, you know? So, not really sure. <laughs> not really sure. But it is, it is literally exactly what's going on I feel today. like the president should be treated like a king of a country yeah like he's got a hard job if he needs to get his dick sucked just suck his dick that's what i say and if he it's wants a to, tough enough job you if know? he wants to murder somebody he just he gets to murder him that's just yeah. the way it goes uh alec get a shot of that police car yeah they're probably getting ready to kick us out of here maybe are they, are they shutting us down or are they shutting down the beach, no, he's, he's probably shut down the beach. so 4 p.m is is when we're supposed to shut mm. down all the beaches here yeah. We heard we heard a rumor about. Is he just keeping on going down, or? I wonder if this is in effect, and we don't know it. We're at five till three right now, uh, so we got about an hour left. Yeah. What kind of plane is that, Dan? Five twenty-two. It's an Osprey. It's a troop carrier. Troop carrier. Yeah. But they fly over here all the time. Not for National Guard deployment or anything? No. Okay. No, they would just drive. Look, I don't know. I'm a fucking <laughs> civilian idiot. I have no fucking idea. Um, the wild thing is... Oh, dude, homegirl just brought a friend. Alec, get this. Sh shoot it real quick. Go. Go, 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 go. She brought a friend now to shoot her Instagram shit. She should have oh, fixed her man, goddamn hair. I love hair. it, dude. She should have fixed her hair first. Her hair is all you fucked can. up. You can't. It's a windy day out here. No, there's... Look, come on, man. It's a windy day. She didn't Done. have a choice but to bring a friend, dude. No, that this was... Is, a look... This that was just some random girl it was a walking stranger. by. Yeah, she actually asked a fucking stranger to shoot. She's her recruiting concept. people into her fucking bullshit now. Man, I am here for all of it. No, I actually love that. I feel like I need a nap now. How's it going? I like that that girl just asked you to shoot her Instagram shit. Yeah. 
It's the, it's the last day. They're going to shut the beaches down, down at like four. So. She wants to get her last one in while she can. <laughs> hey, I fully support it. That's what I said. I fully support it. I fully support it. I was it. working all the angles. I was like, what do you want? Tell me yeah. what you want. Yeah. Yeah. She go. got it. You got to do what you got to do. I got I to gotta get her Instagram account because now I'm going to see which shots made it. There you, you go. go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what we like. I'm curious to know. Y'all enjoy the day. Hey, y'all have a good one. Take care. Man, it's depressing. It's the fucking end of the world. I didn't care. I didn't care for any of that. I don't. I, I know you don't, Dan. What's that? I don't either, man. I, yeah. want, I want shit like this. I want people happy, excited, shooting other people's shit, getting fucked up, having days at the beach. Should we be out here? Who knows? Are we? Yes. Yes, we are. Uh, and again, if you're watching the video show on this, this is just another Tuesday for Dan. It could have been the end of the world five years ago, and he wouldn't, it wouldn't have mattered. It doesn't matter. What's the, so what's this, this plane doing now, circling like that? Does that mean anything in particular? Um, they're probably just doing exercises. Is that, is, that, is that what they tell you to do? Like, hey, man, you got to fly low like that and do I don't, shit? I don't know. I'm not a fucking helicopter pilot. Well, I'm sure you're friends with some, right? Yeah, I, but I don't really inquire about their training. I have no idea what they're doing. What if Dan was never actually in the military and the whole thing was yeah. not? <laughs> <laughs> and all the people you've killed were actually your family members. <laughs> and one day, the feds just busted in the door at the fucking podcast studio. We're like, hey, man, that guy's murdered like 400 people. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I know. No, there is family members. He was never in the military whatsoever. It's just his family members he's killed. And we found them all in a ditch in South Carolina. No, I wouldn't leave them in a ditch. Come on. Where would you put them? In the ocean, bitch. <laughs> I gotta find that body ever. They're gonna wash ashore. No, no, they There's won't. A lot of sharks out here. Yeah. I suppose the sharks would get them at some. There's point. There's no way that if you threw a, if you like, went out in a boat 15 miles or so and dropped a body out, no fucking way it's coming back here. Is that the way to do it? Yes. It is. It's I've a goddamn ocean, it. dude. You know, you watch The Sopranos and shit like that, and when the bodies wash up, remember that one episode of The Sopranos, the body washed up, and it was like, who did this? I don't remember a body wash. Yeah, up. shit got fucked up because a body washed up. That's what I worry about. I remember um, some housing developments getting put in, and Chris had to go dig up a body and put it somewhere else. Okay. I don't remember a body getting yeah, washed up. Yeah, there was up. a body that washed up, I, I think, in the harbor. Um, it was that episode. Well, that might be Dexter because he buried all his in the Miami Harbor. Yeah, man. I don't know. I, it's one of those series, man, I want to go back and watch during all this shit because I'm at the end of my queue. Have you finished watching all your shit yet? I, I never stop. Like, I, I was watching some fucking bullshit Romanian superhero movie. Really? Like, a month and a half ago. I don't give a shit. So you have endless content and you don't care? Uh, yeah, yeah. I care still, man. I can't get into my wife's bullshit. She likes uh, murder docs. <sighs> uh, I can't get into any of that. I can't get into any murder docs. Some of them are okay. Some of them, like, occasionally, like... Uh, like, The Devil Next Door was pretty good. The Jinx was really good. Yeah, Jinx was good, yeah. The Devil Next Door, wasn't that all in foreign language? No, that's the uh, the Nazi that was living in Michigan or whatever. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I walked in, I rolled in, and Jesse's watching this shit that's all in a foreign language the other day, and I was just like... No, India. I'm not doing that. It was like a, an Indian murder on Netflix, and I was like... I can't, because I don't pay attention to the screen when I'm... Like, I'm fucking around or typing or something whenever I'm watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're not fully, fully invested into... No. ...into that shit. No, it's background noise. Yeah. Uh, gotta, par- I w- I, we went we went saw Parasite in the movie theater. That was all in uh, words as yeah, well. I'm, I'm not doing that. You know... If the movie was great, I'm into it. Like, there was one night where, kind of similar to this situation, I forget what was going on, man, but it just felt like a really fucked up day or week or whatever it was. I went and sat in an empty theater and watched The Motorcycle Diaries. Um, it was like a three and a half hour Che Guevara movie um, with uh, Diego Luna and those guys, all mm-hmm. in subtitles. I enjoyed the shit out of my life. Can't do it. Can't do it at all, huh? No. And I'll turn off my phone, too, so I'm not distracted. Like, that way, it's like, all right, cool. I haven't get into this and, and actually get what I paid for. I've never seen anything good enough to make me turn off other stuff. Nothing? No. So you've got to have something in your hand or, or going to somewhere? Yeah, like, when my, my version of relaxing at home is I've got, I'm playing video games on my TV. Then I have an iPad playing a movie or a TV show or something. Mm-hmm. And then I'm intermittently texting or whatever. That's too much. 
Yeah, but our brains are very different, Ross. Yeah, I like to I like to shut her on down. You know, can't do it. I like to shut her on down. This might be the time that I get that razor phone I've been dreaming of. You know, I heard it sucks. The flip phone, the new one that's got the full screen thing, it sucks. I've heard from a drinking bro that works um, at a I don't know which phone company or story works at, but yeah. uh, he said like I'll, like thirty percent of them are getting returned. No shit. Because they're either malfunctioning or people think they're fucking stupid. That's what I always wondered about those things, man. Because you, when you have that foldable screen, it's like, dude. It's just another thing that can go wrong. Yeah, and it's, you know how many times people open up their phone all day long now? Yeah, like, a back million, Back in the day, yeah. you didn't. Um, but now you do. And you're always watching shit and propping mm-hmm. it open. and That makes sense, I guess. Um, but I still want one. I don't really need to. I don't watch, like, movies and shit on my phone. I don't either. I don't watch too many, like, I mean, I guess, like, Instagram and shit, but that's about Instagram it. Instagram and YouTube. Yeah, so I, Alec is off, off camera asking if I heard of Quibi. If you don't know Quibi out there, it's 10 minute, 10 minute, like, shorts, essentially. At comedy and all this other shit, they're dumping a lot of money into it. I know Kevin Hart just signed a deal with it. I can't get into that shit, man. Like, I, I would rather watch, like, it, so here's my attention span these days is either Instagram videos um, or. I want to watch a fucking half hour show or an hour long drama. An hour and a half like documentary to me is maybe the most. When when the Irishman came out with um, Pacino and those guys, Scorsese on Netflix, and it was yeah. three and a half hours. I did it, but I did it because it was Scorsese. I don't know that I would do that for someone else anymore. It's a long ass movie. It was. It was very fucking slow. Did you watch it? Yeah. Yeah. Um. I it's enjoyed good. the performances and all that yeah, stuff, it but good. it was very fucking slow. You could have easily cut an hour and a half of that movie, I thought. Yeah, I don't know who who was the director. It's Martin Scorsese. Or not the director. Who was the uh, producer of that? Um, Scorsese's got his, his own peeps that do that shit. But it's he's one of those guys, like, when he brings in a script, you're doing it his way, and that's it. Uh, my buddy, one of my buddies from college produced Wolf of Wall Street. And I asked him, I was like, you know, he was like, oh, I'm with fucking Marty in the editing room, right? Mm-hmm. And I was like, cool, man. Are you really making any edits? Because their, their company financed it. And he goes, no. No, we're not. And I was like, so how long? What's his cut going to be? And he goes, I don't really know. And I go, you have no say whatsoever. And he goes, no. He has 100% creative control. So when he turns it in, he turns it in. And it is what it is. And I think that movie ended up being maybe three hours and 15 minutes. One of my favorites, though. It's a good movie, yeah. I will watch that all goddamn day long, dude. I, I love that fucking movie, man. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. But, you know, if he doesn't have creative control, you probably don't get that movie. Yeah, I mean, he's. there can't be a whole lot of directors out there that get to turn in a cut and, and walk away. No. Not at all, man. The, I, he may be the only one. Shit. Left. Him and I think Christopher Nolan's the last one. But... Uh, I can't name a movie. Was it? Did he do Dunkirk? Yeah, yeah I did. He did Dunkirk. Yeah. Um, I don't. Man, I didn't do the. I didn't do that great. What happens is they'll put you in a, like a director jail, mm. invisibly, obviously, um, and then they'll start to take away those powers if you're not pumping out hits. Scorsese, I, you know, I watched. I watched one of his last interviews, and he was kind of resigned that this might be his last movie ever. Yeah. He's like fucking seventy-eight or seventy-nine mm. years old, so. We'll see. To shoot an epic saga like that is like two to three years of your life. Yeah. So, shit, man. We might not get a movie like that out of him for... That might be it. Who knows? He's got a good body of work. Yeah. Yeah. Alec, are the, are the police doing anything behind us? Oh, he's gone now. No shit. He went all the way down to Wow. I wonder if they're getting ready to shut it down. Oh, at 4 o'clock? Yeah, soon. So that's a definite? Yeah. Shit. So, yeah, we got about, uh, I don't know, 55 minutes until spring break ends. Uh, Dan, you want to thank anybody out there? No. <laughs> you know I don't. <laughs> Fuck everybody, dude. You kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck out of here. No. Happy spring break, people. You know? Um, I, will, I want to thank some people. I want to thank, uh, I'm going to give a, my own drinking bro of the week away since it's spring break. I want to give it to, to uh, Mike Young. Uh, A.K.A. Bowie Munchausen. One of my favorite people on this earth. Uh, he was 
He was one of the first people, and look, you'll have this in life, man. One of your high school buddies will pass away. Um, he was my first high school, like, best friend to pass away. Passed away at an early age, but God damn it, that guy used to fucking rage, dude. And on spring break, he'd gotten grounded for, like, underage drinking or something fucked up, right? His mom was like, you can't go on spring break. He had this, uh, uh, what do you call those long wagons? Stabbing wagon, you know? Family, uh, the family truckster. With the wood paneling on like the side. Like a car, yeah, yeah. Wagoneer. Yeah, Wagoneer, yeah. He had a Wagoneer. And it, he drove that in high school. Typically, that's not like a cool thing to drive, but he made it cool. And he also had like speakers and all that shit, and we would rage in it. Um, well, we didn't think he was going to make it. Day three, he comes walking down the beach in Panama City, dragging a fucking keg behind him. Nothing stopped that guy from partying. And, uh, you know, fuck, man. I'm almost glad he's not alive to see this right now because this is it. This is the end of the... This could be the end of summer right now. Could be. It's fucking weird, man. It's weird times we live in, but uh, Mike Young, I miss you. I love you, buddy. You're one of my best friends on this earth. And uh, wherever you are, shit, I hope you're raging up there and then looking down at us saying... You guys aren't doing shit. You're not fucking doing that goddamn thing today. And I'm up here partying, dude. What do you think, Dan? Sim world, yes or no? Um, All this feels very sim world right now. Yeah, a little bit. But if if you think about it being a sim world, it's going to make you think everything is, a, is evidence for a sim world. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's confirmation bias. Maybe. I don't care what it is. All I know is that it's all pointless. <laughs> If it's all pointless, then why do it? What the fuck else am I going to do? I don't. You can walk down the, you can jog down the beach with a dog like that. Anybody who gets a dog, sh- get a shot of that dog, Alex. Jesus Christ. Anybody who has a dog that fucking big in your house? He's got apartment? a shovel in his backpack for the shits that goddamn Jesus monster Christ. takes. Mother of Christ. a shovel hanging out of his backpack for the shits on that dog. He could fucking ride that thing in the next Kentucky Derby. That's been postponed into September. Um... I realize a lot of these references, you're probably like, what the fuck are you guys talking about if you're listening to the audio show? Subscribe on YouTube to Drinking Bros Podcast. All of our shows are on there. Drinking Bros Podcast, uh, Ross Patterson Revolution, Savage Saturdays, Drinking Bros Sports, Drinking Broettes. We're all in the same place. Subscribe uh, on YouTube. And uh, we're going we're gonna to try to keep going live every day uh, until they shut it all down, until the electricity fucking burns out on this bitch. Uh, for Danton and Danton Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is Drinking Bros. Happy spring break, everyone.